based in Abuja, Nigeria, and the current chairman of African Mission Association, AFMA. AFMA is the umbrella body of African Missions Association, and its objectives include motivating African Mission Associations in different countries to get involved in missions. 
Gabriel is an intercultural consultant and missionary leader who had served in the field for 35 years. He is the immediate past chairman of Nigerian Evangelical Mission Association, NEMA, and the general secretary of Third World Mission Association, now World Link Mission Association, made up of over 86 countries of Africa, Asia, Latin America, Japan, and few European countries. Gabriel is a core mission leader and has intensively taught on cross-cultural church planning, biblical leadership, and others. He has written three books, including the bestseller, The Imagine Cloud, Sounds of Silence, Seed Fate, and Indulgence. Gabriel is blessed with children. With Jesus' joy, please make welcome to the altar, Gabriel Barao. Amen. Praise the Lord. The introduction is removing my head already. Can we take our seat, please? First, I want to thank God for this opportunity and uh, for sharing about mission and for this great church that has been the great encourager of missionaries in Nigeria and outside this country. It's a pleasure to share with you again about it. And I do believe that at the end of this service, we will have a new paradigm in what God is calling us to do in Jesus' name. I'm so happy today because I believe the senior pastor, I think I, I'm owing him for the past five years now. Anywhere he sees me, say I'm his debtor. I think today he's going to forgive me. We, at last, about four, five years ago, we dragged ourselves to Peru, and uh, he was going to be in Peru, and they couldn't land because they said there is Ebola in Africa, and then they sent them back, and since then I've been in trouble, so I hope you'll be forgiving me today now that I'm still here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Though my everlasting portion, more than friend and life to me. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, close to 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 thee, Lord, all along my pilgrim journey. Savior, let me walk with thee, not for ease or earthly pleasure, not for fame I shall be, gladly will I dwell and suffer, only let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee. Close to thee, close to thee, Lord, close to thee, Lord, all the long, my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Our Father, we thank you at this moment, and we do ask that as we listen to you, may you speak to us in the language of our understanding, in Jesus' name. I want to read uh, Matthew chapter 20 very quickly. Matthew chapter 20, we are talking about those who will give themselves. Those who will give themselves. We are talking about land that are still left unconquered. Those who will give themselves. That will be the subject that we are going to discuss for the past, for the next few minutes. Those who will give themselves. Matthew chapter 20. I want to read very quickly from verse 1. Are we there? Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to, lie, to hire laborers into his vineyard. 
Now, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle, standing idle in the marketplace. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Then again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did the same likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all days long? Then he said, uh, verse 7, They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us, he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Verse 8, So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Verse 9 says, And when they came, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. Verse 10 says, But when they first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Now, verse 11 says, And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. The final verse, which is verse 12. Verse 12 said, These last have wrought about one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Those who will give themselves. Now, I just want to illustrate that scripture that we have just read. And in that scripture, we have two groups of people there. Even though there were five groups that were called in that farm to farm. But I want to quickly show you this map of the world to see we are talking about the unconquered territory of the world. Can you show us the map of the world very quickly? Look at the map of the world right there. And as you can see the green aspect of the, the map there, that is Islamic world. You can see, first and foremost, today as we are talking, the population of the world is about 7.7 .7 billion people. And out of the 7.7 .7 billion people, we are told that about 33% are Christian, call themselves Christians. But you see the green zone of the world there is representing the Islamic world. The other color there, which you see in America, Canada, the southern part of Latin America, and the rest, represent those who go to church. Then you have other non-Christian, non-Muslim world. You have the Hindus. You have other religions that are scattered all over the world. But today we are dealing with a world that no, no God. And our expectation is that by the time we'll be finishing and sharing the grade this morning, or rather through this mission week, you'll be making a decision to be part of what God is calling you to do. I don't know what God is calling you to do, but it might be part of what you can see on that map this morning. So I want us to just look at that scripture, I mean look at that map very critically and see what is left on down. Meanwhile, I just want to look at that scripture that we have just read and then discuss the fact that God is looking for men who will give themselves. This morning God is looking for those who will give themselves. Now look at that story that we have just read. There are two, I told you that there are five people that were called there. Those who were called at the, the, the call at the six hour, then at the nine hour, then at the twelve hour, and then at the eleven hour. About five groups that were called. But I want to classify them into two groups this morning and see what God will, will have you to take home. Now, the first group, let's look at verse one. You can see the first group out there in verse one. The Bible says in verse one, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his, for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. Two groups. Group one of those that were to be in that vineyard were the group of those who agreed with the master. 
the group of those who have an arrangement, men that arrange to do what they will be paid for. And when they were arranged, the Bible said they went into the field. But let's look at that man very quickly. Let's look at the, how they were paid first and foremost. Can you just show us how these people were paid? How, just look at how they were paid. Just look at it. The first group, the whole family, let's assume that they were paid 1,200 naira per day. Are you there? Let's assume that each laborer was paid 1,200 naira per day. You can see that all of them, their gross pay for the day was the same amount. But the first group were called and spent 12 hours in the vineyard working. People laboring for 12 hours. At the end of the day, they were paid 100 naira per hour. Can you, know, can you understand that? They were paid 100 naira per hour, so they went home with 1,200 naira. Assuming they were all paid 1,200 naira, our own currency. Then the second group were in the farm and spent nine hours. Now those groups that spent nine hours were paid 133 naira, 33 kobo per hour. And so they also went home with 1,200 naira. The third group spent six hours. And they, and they labor for six hours and were paid 200 naira per hour. And they also went home with 1,200. Then the fourth group spent three hours. And the master paid them 400 naira per hour. And they went home with the same amount, 1,200. Then the last group, which came and spent only one hour. And the master paid them how much? 1,200 naira per hour. Now, is that justifiable? Just look at that graph. Look at that table. Is that no wickedness? How dare someone work in your vineyard for 12 hours? And then you brought others that spent only one hour. And at the end of payment, you gave them the same amount. Are you happy with that graph? Excuse me, church. If you were the first group, would you complain? <laughs> you will come. If you were the last group, would you complain? <laughs> so you won't complain because everybody wants favor. Now let's look at it. The last group were paid 1,200 and the first group were paid 1,200. Meanwhile, the first group spent 12 hours in the vineyard and the last group spent only one hour. Now you have already said together with me that no, it's not justifiable. It does not look correct for this man to pay them this amount. But why did he make that payment? That is what we discussed. Why should he do that? Now number one, verse two said, verse two, as you read that verse two, can you go to verse two of that scripture? And when he has agreed with them, when he has agreed with them, the first group is the group that arranged with the master. Men who arrange with God before they do something. The Bible said they arrange. It was arranged that until you give us this amount, for the fact that they arrange, you know how much it took them to negotiate. It was the negotiation. Can I give you 120? And they said, no, it's too small. Can I add more? No. Can you add? You know, it was a negotiation. It was a bargain. They bargain with the master. Because they bargain with the master, the master paid them exactly what they bargained for. They bargain. The Bible said there was a negotiation that took place. There was a, an arrangement. Men who arrange with God before they do something. Even in church, there are men who arrange with God to do something. Excuse me. For the fact that this man left his house by 6 a.m., it means that he has a vast land that needed more laborers. And the Bible described that as the kingdom of heaven. And with that vast kingdom, that vast labor land that he was looking for, so much laborers that couldn't sleep, he left as early as 6 a.m., getting laborers to his vineyard. And as he met this guy, they said, let's arrange. How much will you pay us? Do you know that even as you are sitting, there are so many Christians that work with God based on arrangement. 
Everything you do in church, let's arrange. Do you know that you go to so many churches, even before they collect offering, they need to arrange by reading a scripture. To remind you, to remind you that it is an arrangement that when you give, it shall be given unto you. That is why the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38 has suffered every day. Give and it shall be given unto you. Praise together and so. You know they need to remind you that it is an arrangement. If you are not reminded that it is an arrangement, you won't even pay your offering. So every Sunday, they need to read the scripture first to let you understand that there was an arrangement. Christians who arrange before they do something for the Lord. So the Lord paid them based on the arrangement. It's a negotiation. Even when you pay your tithe, Malachi chapter 3, why do you think every day they read Malachi chapter 3? To let you understand that it is an arrangement that God will take away the devourer. Then you will not pay your tithe. If they don't read Malachi chapter 3, how many will pay their tithe? They need to let you understand that God will only take a devourer because it is an arrangement. Christians that arrange before they do something for God. See, they now came to the table of payment and the master said, this one I arrange with them. In 1983, when I was going for a mission, I went to my pastor. <laughs> and I said, sir, God is calling me. Sir, I've already, I want to resign. I want to go to the mission field. Then my pastor looked at me and he said, who is going to pay you? And I said to my pastor, I have not yet arranged with God. And he said, look, bro, Gabriel, don't be foolish. Go and pray over it because you need something. You can't just walk into the mission field like that. And as I walk out in the presence of my pastor, I put my hand on my head and I say, my God, how will I arrange this with God? Then I make up my mind and I say, this thing, I won't arrange anything. Whatever will happen in the field, let it happen. And I walked away. I told the pastor, I said, sir, he said, don't resign yet. I said, I've already submitted the resignation letter. He said, without any salary, I said, because I don't, I have the right judgment of the man that is employing me. So I left. And they were saying, foolish, foolish. Let me tell you. I never knew that I was foolish until I went to the mission field and I discovered that God used the foolish things of this world. <laughs> arrange with God. Man! Who arrange with God? Listen. The field is so wide and you are waiting to arrange with the master. Every year we talk about Omega 2. How much have you gotten involved in it? Are you not waiting for an arrangement? Let me tell you the disadvantage of arranging with God. One day I was in Joss. I lodged in this hotel. My car was very dirty. Then the, you know this hotel security. Sometimes they wash your car for you. So they wash the car. So as I came out, I carried 500 naira. I was holding 500 naira in my hand. This is how I was holding it like this. But I deliberately asked the guy that watched the car, how much is it? And he said, 100 naira. And I said, do you need to arrange? He said, sir, some people have cheated me here. I washed car for them and they gave me only 20 naira. And I asked him, I said, have some people not given you 1,000 before? He said, some have even given me two. What do you need to arrange? So, and I gave him 500. I said, go and look for a change and give him my 400 naira. <laughs> <laughs> so,
See, I was to give him 500 naira, but now it's an arrangement. It's an arrangement. Give, he said, no change. I said, look for it. It's an arrangement. He ran to the, to the reception. He asked for a change. They said they don't have. I said, there is a curse there. <laughs> Go there. I need my change. Do you know why I needed my change? Because it was an arrangement. Men who arrange with God before they do things for him. The reason why our mission is suffering is because God people are waiting for a bargain. Now in my office, when, mission, when people come and say they want to be missionary, we interview them and we give them a booklet. We say, go and read first. In our book, we say, anywhere you die, we'll bury you there. So, son, I'm going to tell you our next of kin that, look, you'll be buried anywhere so that they won't take us to court when you are dead. So, they will sit with our booklet in their hand and they say, ah, so I said, bro, are you afraid of being buried anywhere? What if you die in the sea? Son, then they will be afraid. They say, ask, is there a network where they are going to send me? Then they say, is there electricity where they are going to send me? And then we tell them at that point, you are not qualified. Because we don't work with men who arrange with God. Men that arrange before they do something are keeping God work hostage. Until they do something for you, you won't do something for the master. I went to visit an elder in church one day. He used to be an elder, but now he's not an elder. So I said, sir, you don't come to church anymore. But when you are an elder, you are always in church. Every program you show up. Why were you showing up when you were an elder, but now you are not showing up? Has God changed? So I said, look, you look like you were coming to church so regularly because of the position they gave you. That is an arrangement. Now that you don't have the position, why are you not coming to church anymore? Men that are reign with God are keeping God's word held stage. Now when the master came and as he walked around, he saw them, he said, sit aside there, those who arrange with me. Because none of us will cheat another. I will pay them while we arrange. Excuse me. Is that, you, don't you understand Psalms 24 that he owned the whole world? Do you need to arrange with him? When that boy came with my change, he came with 400 naira. He, I waited for more than 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> I waited for my money. Oh. The reason why I needed the money badly was because he was arranged. As he gave me the money, I collected the money. I said, don't be foolish. How will you arrange with Dangote? If Dangote said, come and clean my car or come and be my personal assistant, will you ask him how much he's going to pay you? Eh? Don't you know your master anymore? Don't you know the Lord who owns everything and has everything in his hands? When I arrived the field, I discovered I was foolish. And I was just there. I said, who will pay me now? <laughs> because I didn't arrange with anybody. I really didn't arrange with anybody. So I sat and I said, now I will need to farm to survive. I didn't regret even for one second. Excuse me. Men that are in. Now the second group is the group of foolish people. Very foolish people. Group of fools. See the group of fools. The girl. Do you know what? The, the man just came like this and said, what are you doing here? When I go to my farm, then they started going. I don't know foolish. <laughs> I don't know foolish. Foolish people. The, you know, he said, yeah, go to my farm. What I do here, I said, I'm waiting for a job. Then he said, go to my farm. Then they started going without asking the man, how much will you pay us? Eh? Then another one, they said, go. Then they went. Go. Then they went. Go. Then they went. And they all went and started working there for the man there without an arrangement. See, these are smart fools. 
Do you know what they are smart for? They understood the master and they knew that he will have a correct judgment. So they started work. And the Bible said evening came. And when evening came, there was time for payment. And as time for payment arrived, the master gathered them. And he put the one that they negotiated and he put them aside. And he put the one that were fools and he kept them aside. And he started making the payments. And they gave them according to what they arranged. When they came to the second group, he looked at them. He looked at them. He said, give them the same amount. It doesn't matter how long they have been. Excuse me, it doesn't matter how long you have been in this church. Oh. Some of you have been here for 10 years. You have been hearing Omega 2, oh, but you have not been part of it. It doesn't matter how oh, you have heard about mission. It's not how long you have stayed here. Oh. It's how much you have done within the time that you stay here. When they say, you see us, and they say, our church is involved in Omega 2. Excuse me. If you say our church is involved in Omega 2, are you involved in Omega 2? Are you involved? You take glory for what others are doing. Every year they come and they talk about mission and you are only listening and you think it is for some other people. The master looked at them and they said, these ones that look like fools, give them the same amount. <laughs> See, my wife is here. When I wanted to marry, two weeks to the wedding, I forgot the marriage. <laughs> no, it's not two weeks, or one week. One week. You know, my father's in law didn't like me before. Because I was in the village and I wanted to marry their daughter. And now, I forgot that the marriage will be taking place in one week time, so I couldn't show up. Do you know why I forgot? Now, I was busy planting churches. I was busy even building churches. I became a mason. I became a carpenter. I became everything. I became the pastor. I became the evangelist. I became the apostle. I became the prophet. I was doing everything in the field. And I forgot that I needed a wife by next week. So I climbed one of the church I was roofing and they were giving me the zinc. And I was putting the nail in my hand fell on somebody's head. Then the boy now said, sir, you want to kill me? What about my wife? Then I remembered that I'm supposed to be married next week. <laughs> See, then I came down. I came down and I put my hand like that and I said, God, I didn't even have a bank account. And I forgot this thing. These people didn't like me before. Now, how will they think now? That was, so I went to Yola on Monday. Now, when I arrived Yola, I was walking like a roasted chicken on the road like this. <laughs> the one brother saw me and said, Bro, Gabriel, he stopped and said, Enter the car. He said, I learned you are waiting next week. I said, Bro, I even forgot. Oh. <laughs> He said, no, don't say that. Don't allow anybody to hear that one. I said, honestly, I forgot. I said, I was busy doing the work for God, and I forgot. Then he took me to his provisional store and bought 30 crack of minerals. And then he paid about 10 crack of malt. And he said, this is my contribution for your wedding. Then I said, bro, just draw me at NTA. Then he draw me at NTO. Then I went to one brother, they, they say he was the manager, the program manager. I said, bro, Kennedy, he's there working with Echoers now. I said, bro, Kennedy, please, you are going to be my best man, no? <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy said, bro, Kennedy, you mean you are not done yet? I said, bro, even the car to go and carry the lady is not there yet. Nothing. And I said, bro, Kennedy, please, I forgot this thing. Honestly, I forgot. So he took me to the manager of NTA. Who knew me well. And he said, sir, Gabriel is waiting this Saturday. And the manager removed 5000 from NTA money. That was in 1989. That was not so much money. 5000 and said, bro, Gabriel, 
this is my support in this structural adjustment program. We are just managing. That money was enough to cover everything. As he gave me the money, he said, Kennedy, what of the camera in government house? That is the new camera. Go and withdraw it to cover Gabriel's wedding and give him the cassette. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh! Excuse me! I said, this is too much. When I left the place, I said, bro, Kennedy, can you draw me somewhere? As he drew me, somebody met me. I said, there is a woman. Her name is Esther. She's the principal of Federal Government College. Yola. She's looking for you. I said, I don't know her. They said, but the woman is really looking for you. So I said, which church is she watching? They told me the church. I went to the church on Wednesday. Remaining three days to the wedding. As I went there, I didn't know the Esther. So I stood at the door. When they shared the grace, I asked one usher. I said, excuse me. I'm looking for one Mrs. Esther. Do you know her? He said, look at that entering that new car, that new saloon car. You know, in those days, they have this SR, uh, uh, Peugeot, SR uh, 504. You want to buy it, just air condition. Oh, my God. Then they said she was entering the car. And I ran there. I said, this woman with this big car is calling me. So I ran there and I said, how are you? Man? Then the woman stopped and said, how are you? Uh, how can I do for you? I said, I land you are waiting, waiting, looking for me. I said, my name is Gabriel. The woman jumped out of the stand and gave me a walk and said, you are the missionary going to wait. Oh, my God. Is this car okay for the wedding? Yeah. Hey! <laughs> then she said, I have two of them. I will give you two drivers and two cars. Is that okay? Then she now said, what about the high table? I said, what is high table? You know missionary. <laughs> I said, what is high table? And as she said, those officials of the wedding, where they will serve them, where they will sit, the official, the chairman, they are the high table. He said, I'm going to provide the, all the things that you needed there. Now, when I left that church and I was working in confusion and I said, God, what is it I did? And God told me, he said, look, when you forgot you are holding, I pick it for you there. <laughs> when you forgot, he said, when you forgot that you are going to wait on Saturday and you were busy doing my work, I started doing your own for you. <laughs> Excuse me. Many of you, when they talk about mission, you are waiting for an arrangement. When we do mission dinner, you know you don't announce how much people give. You will drop 10 kobo. But when they are, are inviting for one thing that they ought to announce how much they give, you will give 1 million. Men who arrange with the master. Excuse me. They are keeping God's work hostage. I pray that you will not be arranging with God after now. The reason why God's work is suffering is that these men are arranging with him. How much will you pay us? If you drop offering, how much will you pay us? If you support mission, how much will you pay us? You are waiting for arrangement. Excuse me, your arrangement may not come. And you may not be a partaker of this kingdom matter. God is not waiting for men who arrange with him. Now, excuse me. Men that arrange with God, let me tell you something. They don't know the master. But the men that are not arranging with God, they understand who the master is. They know his skills and they know his ability. They know what he will do and they know what he cannot do. They know he cannot cheat them. But they know you can also bless them. And so they just walk into the field. And now when it came to payment, listen, the day of payment will soon come. When that day comes, will you be among those who spend 12 hours and are receiving this little? Or those who spend one hour and are now wondering how they gave them this much? It is because they did not arrange with the master. Excuse me. Men that are arranged with God. Before I stop, men, women, God is working for you this moment. When the master was making the payment, he knew that this one are men that settled by a bargain. Let me say this before I stop. Do you remember this story? I think it's in the book of First King or thereabouts. 
That book, but you know the story I'm going to tell you very quickly. And that story has to do with the man called Obededom. You know Obededom? You know that foolish man called Obededom? Eh? Who was he? You see, one day, nobody has seen the ark of God for more than 50 years. And when, Moses, when David became the king of the whole of Israel, he decided to bring the ark to a place he built for it. You remember the story? And as they carried the ark, and every, you know, it was a, joy, it was a day of, re, of jubilation because people have not seen the ark. Many young people have not seen the ark before. So the Bible said they went and carried the ark. And everybody was dancing and they were celebrating and they were rejoicing. And you see, because they were happy that they saw the ark, there was this young man there who was so zealous and he loved God, but he did not live the life. His name was Uza. So when the ark was about to fall from where they kept it on the cart, you remember the story? Uh, Uza wondered, why would the ark fall down when I'm standing by? And the Bible said he reached out to support the ark. Did God spare him? They kill him. Now when God killed him, the Bible said, and God killed him. It's not that he died, or God killed him. <laughs> God killed the man. Now, after God killed him, listen, after God killed him, David himself was afraid. I was studying the story, and I discovered that the man was the nephew of David. Because the story, the, his father was Abinadab. Abinadab was the brother of David. So I saw that they were, he was the nephew to David. And David was annoyed that God killed this young man. And so David, as they were carrying the act, and David saw that the act had become a monster. David turned left and turned right and discovered that to take the ark to the house I built, this ark is not good. Do you know what David did? He cornered, he saw somebody's house very close. And he told the people that carried the ark, the priest, say, go and keep it in the house of Abedadon. No, and they, they just cornered the ark to the house of Abedadon with that cognizant that he has a wife and children. If this thing kill a man on the street, will he spare the children in the house? Eh? And they corner and drop the ark in a bitter dumb house and they walk away with that instruction. Have you read that scripture? They walk away and left the ark in the man's house. But Peter Dom didn't say anything. Men that want to serve God must sacrifice something. But Peter Dom called his wife and his children. That is what I imagine. And said, be careful. That thing killed somebody on the street. <laughs> Don't go near it. Three months! Bible, the Bible said, see, if there were EFCC in the time of Peter them, they would have arrested him. Three months, the Bible said the man just became very rich. <laughs> have you seen the scripture? The man, see, the Bible said, and all his household, including dogs, the food that they were giving the dogs changed. <laughs> Everything changed. Oh. See, assuming it was in his time, he would remove his children from public school to which one? To private ones. His wife, all oh, the Volkswagen, he would have withdrawn the Volkswagen. Now, what are they driving? <laughs> now, those people, listen, those people that saw. David dropped the ark in Obedadom's house and didn't say anything. They went back to David now. Do you know what they told David? They said, are you not the king of Israel? Are you are sitting down here. Obedadom will soon be richer than you. <laughs> huh? That same day, that same day, David came and carried the ark. <laughs> Go and read the Bible. As soon as, see, when David dropped the ark, they didn't advise David that, look, this thing can kill this family. But when God blessed the man, they went and told David that if you are not careful, the man will become the king. So they were struggling and David came that day and carried the ark that same day. But it was too late. Was it not too late? God has done what he needed to do with his servant. Excuse me, are you there this morning? Listen. Are you waiting for something to... Some of you are waiting to bargain with God. When they talk about mission, you see nobody care about mission. When they talk about mission, let me tell you your reason for being in church is to serve and to bring others into the kingdom. Are you sitting down here this morning? 
and you have been bargaining with God. You are waiting for one pastor to preach a message about offering before you give for mission. You are waiting for them to talk about tithe before you give for tithe. Do you know the reason is that you are bargaining with the master? Can we be on our feet this morning? Can we be on your feet this morning? What shall I do, my Lord? What shall I say? Have this drive through all this world. Labor us a few that I might walk the walk of Jesus while yet is there what shall I do my Savior help me to do your will men who begin with God this morning Bro, let's not deceive ourselves. Are you standing here? We are talking about mission. We're talking about mission. We're talking about mission. Open your eyes. Listen to me for one minute. Half five minutes. Listen. I, I, since I went into mission in 1983, I've never known how they sign a salary voucher. 1983 to now is about 36 years. I've not signed a voucher. But let me tell you, I've not begged anybody for food. When it was time for my children to go to school, somebody from nowhere called me and said, I met you in 1986 somewhere. If you are still alive, can you send me your address? When I reply, he said, I will sponsor your children to university. <laughs> Excuse me, wait. I will sponsor my children to university. I didn't know the man. He lived in Spain. So my children grew. He said, look for the best school. I was sending my children to school. So they were wondering, how did he get money? The reason is that because I did not bargain with the master. I didn't bargain. This morning, my daughter is leaving UK. She just graduated and got her master in international law. And she's coming back to Nigeria today. She will arrive tomorrow. But, you know, she went on scholarship. Now they are asking, how do you get the money? They, they, my daughter went on scholarship. Apart from the fact that somebody has said, I will train your children to university. Are you getting me? And then I, sometimes I say, God, why, how would this have happened? Then it occurred to me that because you did not arrange with the master. Excuse me, are you here waiting for an arrangement? Don't be foolish. Are you here and you want to be relevant in this mission in our generation? Just come out. I just want this mission. Just improve this. Just come out. Just, if you want this mission to be relevant in your time. And that you want to be a stakeholder. Not just coming to sit in church. Can you quickly come out? I don't even have time for you now. So that we just pray for you. Whatever you think you can do. To change the system that it might be an arrangement. Bro, can you just walk forward? Sister, just come here. So that they will pray for you. So that you go and be relevant and contribute to the work of mission. I'm just waiting for you. There is no time to wait. Don't arrange with the master. Because it's not it's time that time has passed. Brothers, work. I don't be. Don't waste your time. Be fast. If you understand what we are talking about, we are talking about mission. We are talking about men and women who will give themselves. Are you ready to give yourself this morning? Are you ready to say, "I want to be part of what is going on in this church"? You can't be here and not be part of what is going on. Are you here? You just walk. I just come and say, "God, I want to give myself." Men and women who will give themselves. Where are you? Where are you? Excuse me. What are men and women who will give themselves? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? It's time. Time will fail us. Just come very quickly. Men who will give themselves. I want to be part of what God is doing. See, men who will give, the, give I This church is supporting one of our missionaries. The missionary is in uh, Bangladesh. Last week, last month, I returned from Bangladesh. I told the missionary, come back home. 
No support. Why are you doing there? This thing that, you are, I don't have this much money that you are asking for. When I went to bank like that, let me tell you, I tell the brother, I said, bro, even if it is dead, die here. Do you know what I saw? I saw Muslim convert, Muslim women, children, men converting. And I was the one that was handling them in discipleship and they were giving me the testimony of where they were coming from. And I said, bro, die here. Die here. I said, let's go. When we go, we'll talk about you. Die here. Excuse me, are you here? And you are trying to bargain with the master. You don't know who he is. Thank you for coming. What are the mission people? These people want to be part of what we are doing. Men who are giving themselves. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Men who give themselves. Are you still there? Men who give themselves. Men who want to be part of what God is doing. No, all alone. My pilgrim journey, Savior, let them walk with you. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. As we ask for your favor this afternoon, this morning, help them to understand what they have come to do. Lord, they are ready to do it. They want to be fools for your sake. And Lord, you say you use the foolish thing of this world to confound the wise. May it be done unto them. In Jesus' name. Can you just go this side? Just walk this side. And they will just talk with you briefly. As I hand over the microphone. To who will I hand over the microphone. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.